back at the Tome of Texas, just what, what kind of your main takeaways from how that went? Well, you know, the importance of every moment in the game, right? Okay, obviously it didn't go the way we wanted at all. Um, you know, and I'm sure, and the coach talked about this, but you have a chance multiple times to, you have possession of the ball, you have a chance to go down and take the lead, and we can we can capitalize on that. And you play a good team like that, those opportunities you have to capitalize on. And, you know, you can look at <clears throat> situational things that come up and, and our inability on third downs to convert and all those sort of things. And, and we talk about fundamentally when it's not getting executed the way it needs to. If you're a reader, there's an uh, author, I'm sure you've heard the name, Malcolm Gladwell, right, who wrote the book Outliers. There's a chapter in there. It's called The Ethical Theories of Plane Crashes. And the chapter goes in to talk about why the, the reasons statistically why planes would crash. And it goes, and what you take away from the chapter is that it's usually a series of little things that go wrong, compounded with one another, that ultimately cause a, a plane to fail, or a flight to fail, however you want to describe it. And I say that, and I use that analogy all the time with our players and our team, is, is usually it's never just one thing. It's never one position. It's never one player. It's never one singular play call. It's all of those things combined typically result in failure. Like, like all these little micro cuts. And that's kind of what the game was for us after looking back at the film. And so going back and when you have, we couldn't stay on the field, they couldn't get off. You have fewer snaps and so everything is magnified. All those little micro cuts are magnified. That's what you take from watching that game film. And the credit to our players, everyone went on and owned it, moved on, said we know we're better than this. Let's get ready to play a good team on Saturday. Have you ever been in a situation where you have to spend a week with one quarterback practicing, getting reps, and then day of the game, it changes? Um, no, I mean, it was unique for sure. I know you had asked Coach about that. I mean, it's a unique situation, and it's, but, you know, there's – you know, you don't want to make excuses because you want to be ready for every situation. And credit to Jason, you know, goes out there and, you know, I know he wants to play better, but I know I think yeah, someone asked him, when, you know, when he found out. You know, it's like, all right, hey, you can be a starting quarterback. All right. He responded really well. So, um, no, I haven't in my career. On the, on the flip side of that, uh, Lance talked about you know trying to get Jalen going still, even after kickoff and that kind of thing. What, what what is your process when that's happening? You you know you know Jalen, if things go well, might actually be taking the field again, but you don't know if that's going to happen. What what were you working through, or do you even have time to concern yourself? You, you, uh, it's more the la the latter. Yeah. You don't have a lot of time to think about it because you have to be, and this is sometimes the the hard part about the the game. Is, is, is if you lose a player, you have to move on with what you have, and you have to plan and execute accordingly. And if you spend too much time thinking about ifs and buts, right, it, 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 you have a you're not you're not present, right? You know your your head's not where your feet are in the moment. We need to make sure that we were doing what was necessary with the the players that we had that were available. Sure, it was got to make this week feel pretty pretty calm in a sense, right? Because you have a whole week to address it, whatever's happening. And and who's ready and who's not, you kind of know as, as time goes by. Right? Yeah, you, you know, when, you, when, you, so when, you, when there's adversity, it's a lot easier when you know what it is, right? You know, so, um, and, and there's a lot of lessons to learn from that scenario about, you know, preparation and mindsets and all those kind of things that, that I take away from that. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased with how Jason's prepared and always have been. You know, that's why. You know, you know, there's no panic. There's no, oh my gosh, you know, the game plan. You know, we're not, we're not living in that world. We do, we do because we have him too, yeah. right? How does it change your preparation? Like, you know, what you learned from him last week, and also the possibility something like that could happen again. Well, you just again, I think I've talked about here about how experience being the greatest teacher. I mean, I've been through that now. So if something like that happens again. You know, you, you just make sure that you respond appropriately. I don't know that we alter, you know, I mean, we're not going to change how we do things. We do things the right way. We do things, the, you know, because it's been time tested and we'll evolve and we grow. But, you know, you're not going to go into the situation in the game week and all of a sudden start doing things differently, you know, with, with what it is. What do you want Jason focusing on this week, especially after you play against Texas? Well, the same things that we would expect any of our quarterbacks to focus on, right? Understanding the game plan, referencing the calls, going out there and executing them correctly, and then the right way, you know? Uh, um, again, you don't – I think I said this last week when we talked about do you play up to somebody. Your process is who you are, right? You don't all of a sudden – your role changes and all of a sudden go, oh, I'm going to try harder now. 
You're right. Like, like, and he's not doing that. Nobody's done that. Okay. So I'm really pleased with our whole organization and how we're very focused on that process. And you can't negotiate it. And so if you have to raise up to play a team like Texas or raise up because your role changed, you weren't doing it correctly the first way. You know, does that make sense how I say it like that? Because I think it really is important for any player or person. Are you preparing for what you want to be? Right? And so, you know, Coach Leipold had said this before. He's like, you know, if you, if you, you know, are you preparing for the job that you want to actually have? If you want to be a head coach someday, you're doing those things. You know, if you want to be a coordinator someday, you're doing those things. If you're a backup center and you want to be the starting center, are you preparing like you're the starting center? That's what our organization, we want all of our players to be able to operate that way. How are the reps being divvied up? Uh, everything's pretty balanced. It's on, on course right now, just like we normally typically do. We haven't altered how our preparation has been this week. Well, we, we heard that Jalen didn't practice on Monday. Has, has he practiced yesterday? Has it, been, has it been an update from what Coach talked about in regards to Jalen? Something you guys have always talked about is owning what you see on film. Can you walk us through the process for you as a coordinator from Saturday after a game to Monday at about noon after the first practice? Okay, so the game's over, right? <clears throat> Typically, win or lose, and I say, we say this to the players on Monday morning when we practice, you can win by 50, you can lose by 50. What you do Monday doesn't change because if you're a process-oriented organization, you have to move on, you have to grow. You could win a game, you could lose a game. Being in the position I am, I always tend to view it with a very critical eye. So you could win by 50 and I'm still upset about this player, that player, this player that didn't go the way it should have gone. So I have those same feelings, right? Okay, after you lose a game. So you're evaluating the tape, you're looking at, first of all, internally, what did we not game plan well for? What did we not execute well? What was we surprised? And then you're looking at them and saying, okay, what did they do schematically that we weren't prepared? So you go a lot of, you've got a long checklist of things that we, we answer after watching the film. Then you look at the personnel, you evaluate if someone maybe didn't perform as well or they performed really well, and you start to think on why or why not. Okay, did we put them in position enough to succeed as a coach? Um, did we put them in too many positions that we didn't prepare for? So you are really truly evaluating what your game plan was the whole week. And you do that and then you quickly turn the page to the next opponent, right? So what was, was, was Central Florida this week. So you, you, you early on Sunday have moved on to prepare because you have to come in Monday and help the players turn the page as well, which they did. They came out and had a really nice Monday practice. Andy, when you were preparing for two quarterbacks, I know you try not to change your offense, but do you change how you approach the game or maybe do you play almost depending on the quarterback? I think I was asked that question a year ago. And if you would check the notes, I think my, my, my comment was this. There's two engines on a plane. When you lose one, you're good. You follow me? Right? But in your mind, you're like, okay, we better get to where we're doing. Right? I would have the same response. Right? And if, if someone would have I don't know what the deal with planes today is, by the way. So if anyone's <laughs> flying, just, you know what I mean? I don't want any bad omen out there. If, if someone had told you before the season that you'd have a game where your receivers only had four receptions, would that have surprised you? Yeah. yeah. If you told me you are going to play a game that you only had 36 meaningful snaps before your last drive, I would say that would have surprised me too. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, when, when again, when you play so few snaps, everything gets magnified. Touches, targets, reps, converts, all that stuff. It just, it's just way that's the way it is, right? Because your your pool gets so small. Are there any of those third downs that still stand out to you? Well, they all do. Every one of them, right? You know what I mean. But like we we're talking about the process after, you're growing from them, right? And 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 again, if it wasn't executed, why not? Like you know, use that, that the ethical theories of playing because it was almost always a series of little things combined. So you can't just point and say poor execution by this guy or that position group or the play call within itself. It was all, right, not a great call combined with a eh, bad execution and a poor quick decision or whatever it might be, right? So it's, it's really all those things and not one of them in particular sticks out. Obviously, getting beat on third and short and fourth and short, right, to decision, you know, is it was a momentum swinging play, but, you know, that's a big one in the game, but in itself, you never know. That's the thing about football. You never know which one of those plays is the actual difference. People forget about the first one. It's arguably the most important one because that's the one that you're currently a part of, right? So. When you look at you, UCF on defense, what do you see from him? You know, a lot of athleticism. And, I, and I'm sure I, I, get, I didn't hear exactly what the coach said, but I'm sure there was something to affect on both sides of the ball. 
um, talks about athleticism and speed, and, and that shows up uh, on tape for sure. And what they're doing, they, they got a couple of corners that that really have, um, you know, our respect uh, as as a program. They do a good job. They're locking guys down. They're, they're long, and, they're, and they and they do a great job in coverage, and allows them um, to do some things schematically and with their box. They know that in any given moment, <clears throat> they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna challenge receivers outside for sure. And so that that'll be an important part for us. Their style of play, their style of defense, is it similar to any of the current Big 12 teams? Going back to yeah, that's a good question. Is it similar, their style um, that we've played? Yeah, maybe last year, year before. You know, I think about the, the Houston team maybe a little bit in terms of maybe their personnel. There's a lot, you know, some good athletes are running around the field. Schematically, they're, they're multiple and variable enough that they're not going to just say, Here, here's who we are, beat us. Um, you know, I wouldn't, but it's hard to say that they're like this or that team right now. You know, it's unique because you get asked that question sometimes, and, and I ask that question a lot of times of our personnel too, you know, our people in the building. And it's hard to really say they're just like them because they're every guess, every team's unique to themselves. But um, no, they, they, they're athletic and they're fast and they, they run the ball well, and, and we got to be able to match that. You're different, he's different, there's a lot of differences, but it just happened a couple weeks ago, the K-State kid who almost went for 300 yards and four touchdowns against this defense. When that happened so recently, do you look more at that? Do you, do you take any extra stock in that? You, you, yeah, part of our evaluation, the first step in the looking at opponent is who has had success against them and what do they do. So, yeah, you look at that game and you go, okay, you know, there's some good things to take from that and who they are. You look at other teams that they play, and maybe have tried that and didn't have as much success. Um, so yeah, you you definitely evaluate all those things, right? Uh, um, every opponent, watch all those games and try to figure out. Not that you steal things, even though I have told you before, we'll steal as much as we possibly can. But um, you know, we are like you said, we are who we are. We have to make sure that we're playing to our strengths and not maybe doing things that other people did. You know? Yeah. Over but you look career. at it. Sure. Over your career, not. I'm not asking about this specific instance now, but, but over your career, have you ever seen a game where a guy does something like that and you're playing that team coming up and you've just straight taken something and said, we have to do that against these guys? I, again, big picture your whole career or anything like that. Does that ever happen? Uh, I don't, I'm trying to think. I'm sure in my how many ever years of coordinating that I have done that. Yeah, okay. Right, probably particularly younger. In the back half of, of my coordinating career, I think one of the strengths of our staff in myself has been that you really worry about your current personnel. And I think if you can reflect on yourselves and your players' strengths and capabilities and really truly understand that, and you've heard me say that before, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, that is the first step in coming up with a good game plan. If that often aligns with maybe things that have had success before, then yes, you, you do some of those things. But you know, schematically, there's, there's still a difference between who they are and we are for sure. But um, yes, and as a Football guy, I love good football. You know what I mean? I really appreciate well executed football. All right, appreciate y'all. Enjoy those worthers. Okay. <laughs>